What is up everyone, my name is Joseph and welcome back to Casual Competitive MTG where it's our goal to bring you semi-competitive EDH gameplay content that is both fast-paced and entertaining. The pod we have for you today are the fan favorite commanders from our budgeted season and interestingly enough there were no blue commanders voted on as the fan favorites. The four commanders we have for you today are Yogmoth Thran Physician, Grand Warlord Rada, Winota Joiner of Forces, and Neheb the Eternal. As a quick note, we've been kind of lost on how to manage these polls since YouTube removed their in-video voting poll system and we've been using Google Forms recently. In the future, we're going to switch from that to using the YouTube community poll system. So let us know what you think about that. Maybe it's too spammy. Maybe it's easier to vote. Let us know your thoughts on that. That being said, before we get into the opening hands and deck introductions, let's go over some quick channel promotions. First, this video is sponsored by Alter Sleeves. If you're looking to pick up some cool looking art for your commanders or the cards in your decks without having to physically altering them, check out Alter Sleeves using the link in our description to not only support the channel, but also support artists on Alter Sleeves and pick up some affordable, unique looking card art. If you want to directly support the channel, we have a Patreon link is in the description with some reward tiers set up that we think you'll really enjoy if that's something you're interested in. This support goes a long way to help improve these videos and we really appreciate those who help us out in this way. Next, if you want want some casual competitive merch, tokens, or playmats when they're available, head on over to our website, link is also in the description. If you're looking to pick up cards in the near future, click on our TCG affiliate link before you do to directly help out the channel at no cost to you. And finally, if you're looking for some more Magic the Gathering memorabilia, we're affiliated with Flipside Gaming, where if you use our code CASUALLYMTG at checkout, you can receive 10% off eligible purchases and support the channel. And between now and when the set releases, we're partnering with them to do a Commander Legends box giveaway. Details link in the description. Now with that out of the way, let's get into the opening hands and deck introductions. Adam went first in this game, playing Yogmoth Thran Physician. This mono black deck looks to use Yogmoth's ability to control the board and keep the board clear of enemy creatures, all while looking for a combo that involves normally cards like Nest of Scarabs and Zulaport Cutthroat that allows them to, with Yogmoth's ability, kill the 1-1 that's created with Nest of Scarabs, drain the table, and gain a life, allowing him to win the game. Adam's opening hands contain two swamps, a soul ring, a doomed dissenter, a phyrexian revoker, a bastion of remembrance, and a crypt ghast. Going next is Bill playing Grand Warlord Rada. This gruel based stacks deck looks to slow down the table with stacks effects and land destruction, getting around it with Rada's ability, all while looking for a win con involving either infinite combat steps with something like Aggravated Assault or Hellkite Tyrant, or with a Kiki Jiki slash Splinter Twin based combo line. Bill's opening hand contain a mountain, a forest, a soul ring, a winter orb, a hyrax tower scout, a goblin assault, and a court of calling. Going third is myself, Joseph, playing Winota, joiner of forces. This hate bear filled Boros deck looks to get fast value off of Winota, amassing a board of hate bears and valuable creatures, all while looking for a win con involving either Godo, bandit warlord, or a combo line involving either Kiki Jiki or Splinter Twin. I went down to six cards in this game, and my opening hand contained a plains, a mountain, a torch courier, a deafening silence, a spirit of the labyrinth, a village bell ringer, and I put a tithe taker to the bottom due to the lunch. And Mulligan. And finally, going last is Jordan playing the Heb the Eternal. This is an aggressive mono red deck that looks to just get massive value off of Neheb's ability, giving him valuable ramp every turn, all while looking for a win con involving either Aggravated Assault or Hellkite Tyrant to generate infinite combo steps with Neheb's mana generation ability, or with a Kiki Jiki or Splinter Twin combo line, which if you haven't noticed is a very good red win condition, especially in budget. Jordan's opening hands contain three mountains, a ghost quarter, a tormenting voice, a zealous conscripts, and due to the London Mulligan, he put a Jaya's Immolating Inferno to the bottom of his library. If you want to watch these games live, we stream these games on Sundays to our Twitch channel. Link is in the description for that. And now with that all out of the way, let's get into the gameplay. Adam starts off this game by drawing, playing a swamp as his land for turn, and he then taps that swamp to cast a soul ring. He then taps that Soul Ring to cast an Ever-Flowing Chalice, kicking it one time. With nothing left, he gives a turn to Bill. Bill draws, plays a Mountain as his land, and liking Adam's turn one, taps his Mountain to cast his own Soul Ring. He then taps his Soul Ring to cast a turn one Winter Orb. With nothing left, he gives a turn to Joseph. Joseph draws, plays a Plains as his land for turn, and then for one white mana casts a Deafening Silence. He settles into his chair for a nice long game, and then passes the turn to Jordan. Jordan draws, plays a mountain as his land, and then for one red mana, casts a gamble. 
He searches a card to his hand and then discards a Ruination at random. With nothing left, he shifts the turn to Adam. Adam untaps, plays another Swamp as his land, and then taps his mana to cast a Crypt Ghast. He then taps a Swamp for two black mana in order to cast a Phyrexian Revoker. It resolves and when it enters the battlefield, he names Soul Ring. With nothing left, he gives the turn to Bill. Bill untaps one land, plays a forest as a land for turn, and then taps his mana to cast a Generator Servant. With nothing left, he gives a turn to Joseph. Joseph untaps, plays a mountain as his land, and then taps his mana to cast a Spirit of the Labyrinth. Is it really a casually competitive game if there's not at least three stacks pieces on the board by turn two? Anyway, with that all done, Joseph passes the turn to Jordan. Jordan untaps, plays a mountain as his land, and then casts the card he gambled for, which is unfortunately at this point, is a soul ring. With nothing left to do, he gives the turn to Adam. Adam untaps one land due to the winter orb, and then plays a swamp as his land for turn. He then taps his mana to cast his commander, Yogmoth Thrand Physician, paying an extra mana to extort it, draining his opponents for one and gaining three life. He then goes to combat and swings the Phyrexian Revoker and the Crypt Gas at Jordan for four total damage. Jordan declares no blockers, takes the damage, and Adam then passes the turn to Bill. Bill untaps his land, plays a force as his land for turn, and then sacrifices his generator servant to help cast his commander, Grand Warlord Rana. However, with nothing left to do, he decides to keep up the blocker and not attack with his commander, he then passes the turn to Joseph. Joseph untaps one land, plays a Mistress Factory as his land for turn, and then for two mana casts a Prismatic Lens. With nothing left, he passes to Jordan. Jordan untaps a land, plays a Mountain as his land for turn, and with nothing left to do, ships the turn over to Adam. Adam untaps, making sure to only untap one Swamp due to the Winter Orb, plays a Swamp as his land for turn, and then taps his mana to cast a Bastion of Remembrance. When it enters the battlefield, he creates a 1-1 human token, and he then goes to combat and again swings the Revoker and the Crypt Guest at Jordan, and Jordan again takes the 4 damage. With nothing left, Adam gives the turn to Bill. Bill untaps one mountain due to the Winter Orb, and unfortunately with nothing to do, has to just pass the turn to Joseph. Joseph untaps a Plains due to the Winter Orb, and then immediately goes to combat, swinging the Spirit of the Labyrinth at Jordan. Jordan declares no blockers and takes 3 damage. With nothing left, Joseph passes the turn to Jordan. Jordan untaps, plays a Rogue's Passage as his land for turn, and then he goes to pass the turn to Adam, and on Jordan's end step, Adam pays two black mana and discards a Doomed Dissenter in order to activate Yogmoth's Proliferate ability. In response to this, Joseph for a white mana casts a Path to Exile, targeting Adam's commander. The path resolves, Adam decides to put his commander into the command zone, and he searches a tapped Swamp to the battlefield. The proliferate trigger then resolves and he adds another counter to his ever-flowing chalice, and he then goes to his turn. On his turn, he untaps a swamp due to winter orb and then goes to combat and swings a total of 5 damage at Joseph. Joseph declares no blockers, takes the damage, and Adam then gives the turn to Bill. Bill untaps a forest, plays a mountain as his land for turn, and he then goes to combat and declares Rada as an attacker at Adam. On attacks, he creates a red mana from Rana's ability, and Adam then doesn't declare any blockers and takes the damage. In his second main phase, Bill uses this red mana to help cast a Goblin Assault, and with nothing left, he gives a turn to Joseph. Joseph untaps a Mountain due to Winter Orb, draws a card, and then retaps that Mountain in order to cast a Torch Courier. He then goes to combat and swings the Torch Courier at Adam. Adam declares no blockers and takes one damage. With nothing left, Joseph passes the turn to Jordan. Jordan untaps, plays a mountain as his land, and then he taps his mana to cast his commander, Neheb the Eternal. With nothing left and really being slowed down by the three stacks pieces on the board, he passes the turn to Adam. Adam untaps one swamp, plays a swamp as his land for turn, and then recasts his commander, Yogmoth Thran Physician. He then goes to combat and swings a total of five damage at Bill. Bill declares no blockers and takes the damage. With nothing left, Adam passes to Bill. Bill untaps a mountain and then at the beginning of his upkeep creates a 1-1 goblin from the goblin assault. He then plays a force as his land for turn and then goes to combat and swings Rada and the goblin at Joseph. On attack, he makes two green mana, Joseph declares no blockers, takes the damage, and in his second main phase, Bill uses this green mana to help cast a Hyrax Tower Scout. When it enters the battlefield, he untaps his commander and with nothing left, he passes the turn to Joseph. Joseph untaps a Plains due to the Winter Orb, and then retaps that Plains to cast a Giver of Runes. With nothing left, he gives the turn to Jordan. 
Jordan untaps a mountain, plays a Valakut as his land for turn, and he then goes to combat and swings Neheb the Eternal at Joseph. Joseph declares no blockers, takes 4 damage, and in Jordan's second main phase, he makes 4 red mana from the damage that was dealt. He then uses this mana to help cast an overloaded Vandal Blast. In response to this cast, Adam pays 1 life and sacrifices his Phyrexian Revoker in order to target Neheb to give him a negative 1, negative 1 counter. The Revoker dies and each of Adam's opponents lose 1 life from the Bastion of Remembrance and Adam gains 1. Yogmoth's ability then resolves, Neheb gets a negative 1, negative 1 counter, and Vandal Blast then resolves and all of the artifacts on the board that don't belong to Jordan are destroyed. With nothing left, Jordan gives the turn to Adam. Adam untaps and starts his turn by casting and extorting an Icarats. He drains the table for one, gains three, and when it enters the battlefield, everyone at the table gets one infect counter. Adam follows this up by casting and extorting a blood pet, again draining the table and gaining three, and he then goes to combat and swings a total of five damage at Jordan. Jordan declares no blockers, takes the damage, and Adam passes the turn to Bill. Bill untaps all of his lands now, creates a goblin at the beginning of his upkeep, and then immediately goes to combat and swings every creature he has at Adam. On attacks, he generates 4 red mana, and before the damage is dealt, Bill casts an entwined savage beating. Adam then declares his blocks, blocking Rana with the blood pet, and in response to moving 2 damage, he pays 1 life and sacrifices this blood pet to drain the table for 1 and gain a life, and also put a negative 1 negative 1 counter on Spirit of the Labyrinth. Adam has not drawn a card this turn, so he draws and the Spirit of the Labyrinth is then destroyed. And Adam takes 10 total damage from the combat damage. Bill then goes to his second combat step, and in response to moving to the second combat step, Adam taps for 2 mana to cast Go for the Throat, targeting Rada. There are no responses, Rada is destroyed, and Bill then continues to the second combat step, swinging the goblins at Adam. Adam doesn't declare any blockers and takes 4 damage. With nothing left to do, Bill passes the turn to Joseph. Joseph untaps, plays a Plains Ass's land, and then taps for 4 mana to cast his commander, Winota, Joiner of Forces. In response to this cast, Adam pays 1 life and sacrifices his human token to drain the table for 1 and gain a life, and also put a negative 1, negative 1 counter on Torch Courier. The activation resolves, Torch Courier dies, and still in response to Winota, Adam pays another life and sacrifices Icarats, draining the table for 1, gaining a life, again drawing a card, and puts a negative one negative one counter on giver of runes adam then still in response to inoda pays two black mana and discards a swamp to proliferate all of the negative one negative one counters with the exception of his own infect counter winoda then finally resolves and joseph with nothing to do in his combat step just passes the turn to jordan Jordan untaps and then goes to combat, swinging the head at Adam. Adam declares no blockers, takes the 2 damage from this weakened commander, and Jordan generates 2 red mana at the beginning of his second main phase from the damage that was dealt. He uses his mana to cast a Cathartic Reunion, discarding 2 cards, drawing 3, and he then taps his mana to cast Kiki Jiki Mirror Breaker. With nothing left, he passes the turn to Adam. Adam untaps, draws, looks at his hand in his board, and decides it's best to just pass the turn to Bill. So that's what he does. Bill then goes to his turn, untaps, creates another goblin in his upkeep, and during his first main phase, he convokes out a Court of Calling, X equaling 5. He searches a Tender Shoot Dryad to the battlefield, and just so you know, he does have the city's blessing. It enters the battlefield, and with nothing left to do, Bill passes the turn to Joseph. Joseph untaps, and in Joseph's upkeep, Bill creates a sapperling. Joseph then immediately goes to combat, activating his mistress factory to turn it into a creature. He swings the factory at Jordan, and on attacks, Winona triggers and he looks at the top 6 cards of his library. He finds a human, and puts Godo Bandit Warlord onto the battlefield, tapped and attacking Bill. When Godo enters the battlefield, Joseph searches a Helm of the Host to the battlefield. Jordan then blocks the Mistress Factory with Kiki Jiki, and Bill takes 3 damage from Godo. With nothing left, Joseph passes the turn to Jordan. Jordan untaps and then immediately goes to combat, swinging his weakened commander at Joseph. Joseph declares no blockers, takes 2 damage, and Jordan generates 2 red mana. 
He then uses this to help cast Caravex Torch X equaling 3, targeting Godo Bandit Warlord. Godo is destroyed, and Jordan then goes to pass the turn to Adam, and at the end of Jordan's turn, Adam floats 4 mana, pays 1 life, and sacrifices his Crypt Ghast to again drain the table for one draw a card and put a negative one negative one counter on the dryad and he then uses his mana to proliferate twice adding a counter to the dryad to kill it adding two on and a head and adding two more infect counters to his opponents adam then goes to his turn untaps taps his mana to cast a pitiless plunderer and then with nothing left passes to bill Bill untaps creates a goblin on his upkeep and then taps his mana to cast a loyal apprentice he then goes to combat and swings 11 total damage at Jordan. Jordan declares no blockers, takes the damage, and Bill then goes to pass the turn to Joseph, and on Bill's end step, Joseph taps for 3 mana to flash out a village bell ringer. It resolves, untaps his creatures, and Joseph then goes to his turn. On his turn, he untaps, draws, and then taps for 4 mana to cast a Splinter Twin, targeting his Village Bell Ringer. At this point, Adam is unable to kill the initial Village Bell Ringer, although he could put a few negative 1 negative 1 counters on it, it wouldn't be enough to kill it, and nobody else has any responses, so the Splinter Twin resolves, and Joseph can then tap his Village Bell Ringer to create a copy, untapping the original, and making as many Village Bell Ringers as he wants and they all have haste. He then goes to combat and swings enough damage at his opponents to take them out of the game, and he then wins the game. Now I could be wrong, but I think this is the first game we've played on the channel without any blue in it, and honestly, it was pretty fun. It was nice not having to worry about counter spells or really too much control, and it was kind of just freeing. Now we all were playing budget decks, so they were just naturally slower than normal, but it was a really interesting pod to play. So thank you everyone for voting on your favorite commanders so we could come up with this pod that was really interesting and fun. Overall, this was a really back and forth game, and even though the stacks pieces really slow down the board for the most part. If you were paying attention, even though the Neheb player, for example, wasn't able to do too much in this game, with that Kiki Jiki, he did have a Zealous Conscript still in hand. So there was a lot going on in this game, even if it wasn't plainly obvious. And just overall, this was a really fun pod. With that being said, there's really not too much to go over. This was a pretty straightforward game, and we hope you enjoyed it. This will be the end of our budgeted deck lists for now. We may revisit it in the future, but this will be the last video featuring the budgeted deck list that we had put together and we'll be starting up our next season of gameplay very soon and based on the spreadsheet that we have with the deck lists and pod structure i'm pretty sure we haven't seen any of these commanders yet on the channel so it should be a fun one and we hope you're excited for that that being said that is all we have for this video we hope you enjoyed it i am joseph this is casually competitive mtg and we will see you next time